In our first segment, we looked into how impact investing is providing a source of capital for business development in underserved communities. The next question is, how does that money get deployed? What are the qualification procedures? And how long does it take to see results? My name is Jim Connor. Welcome to Game Changers Silicon Valley. In this segment, we'll address how a federal program known as CDFI is providing funding to entrepreneurs as a jump start for economic development. My guests are Tanya Holland, chef, author, and founder of Brown Sugar Kitchen in Oakland, California, and Catherine Berman, founder and CEO of My C Note. Tanya and Catherine, I really enjoyed that first that first segment conversation about the structure of uh, C Note and how you you did this massive due diligence on the CDFI organizations. How ultimately, how did you proceed to decide exactly which ones you wanted to work with? Obviously, there was due diligence you did, but then you had to make some decisions, both regionally, demographically. How did that happen, and how did it come about? Yeah, so we decided um, for our initial target, we really wanted to work for the coast, with, Calif with the California coast, uh, with California and with New York um, specifically. And so what we found were several players that have now become amazing partners for CNOTE, specifically um, Excelsior Growth Fund, which is one of the most reputable CDFIs in the country and actually does phenomenal work in uh, the New York state area. And then on the West Coast, working with two phenomenal CDFIs, one which is called CDFI, CDC Business, CDC Small Business, and the other one which is called Main Street Launch. And so working with the executives at those CDFIs have been phenomenal because they're open to innovation, they're open to this conversation, and really all of us are in it for the same reason, which is how do we expand access to capital, fair capital, to phenomenal entrepreneurs like the woman sitting next to me, and that's at the heart of it. So Tanya, I want to thank you for coming here. You oh, drove, yeah. You drove quite a distance. And, <laughs> Not too uh, bad. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you've got all this experience as uh, your uh, chef, author, and founder, and CEO of uh, Brown Sugar Kitchen in Oakland. So yeah. let's tell us a little bit about that, and then we'll talk about how you engage with CDFIs. I've been working in the restaurant business for uh, almost 30 years. Started in college just as a part-time right. job. Then uh, after I graduated, I moved to New York City, worked in advertising for a while, but there was something about the restaurant business that just kind of drew me. I mean, I know what it was. A lot of it was, it was entrepreneur, entrepreneurial aspect and wearing lots of hats um, and just being able to be creative, but also business-minded. And um, so I just worked my way up, paid my dues, you know, worked in a lot of restaurants there, went to cooking school in France eventually. Uh, and then came back and worked in restaurants and had this vision of opening my own and uh, moved to the Bay Area 15 years ago because mm -hmm. it's just a food capital that I always wanted to live and work in and opened Brown Sugar Kitchen almost nine years ago. How did you get the idea to open Brown Sugar? Which, yeah, how did well, that come about? My uh, parents are both yeah. from the South. Yeah. And so, you know, Southern food and soul food overlap a lot. And um, I wanted to bring some of the techniques I learned in France, as well as some of the California values of local, sustainable, organic to the cuisine and just make it accessible to everyone. And so um, I actually was looking to do a, a, initially a concept that incorporated more of the French influence, kind of like Creole, like New Orleans food. Um, but then I ended up in West Oakland. That was the real estate that I had access to. And I needed a concept that was more user-friendly than this little esoteric name I had for this other concept. And I came up with Brown Sugar Kitchen, and my graphic designer got really excited about it. And then every time I said it, people were excited. So went with that. That's, <laughs> a, great, that's a great story. Eight years now you've been doing yeah, that. And, yeah, almost And somewhere nine. along the line, you decided to uh, seek some bank capital. Well, I had to. I mean, most restaurants get launched with private equity. You know, um, restaurants have a reputation of being high risk. I think, I mean, I know for a fact, because I've been in this industry for a long time and watching and emulating very successful restaurateurs, chef owner operated restaurants tend to be the most successful. There's a lot of examples we could use, um, especially in the Bay Area. Um, so I never, you know, I always try to defend myself and say, but I'm the chef and, you know, I'm going to be watching the bottom line and those margins that uh, only a chef would. So I did find a little bit of private equity. It was, it was tough. And again, it was 2008. So I started fundraising, I think, in 2006 or 7. And, um, and then, of course, you know, banks would not loan at that time. And I just plugged away. I actually started the relationship with um, Bain Street Launch. And um, I had an initial 
loan that was based on um, attaining some um, commercial equipment. So, um, and then we grew and we needed a little bit more to do some uh, more projects and working capital. And, um, you know, it was just, it's just been a really friendly relationship. There's, there's not a lot of options out mm -hmm. there. So if I get the connection right, you're offering an opportunity for everyday people, if I may use that word, like mm -hmm. me, <laughs> to invest in your fund, if, and once I pass you due diligence background check, right. and to then be a part of a program that provides money to uh, Main Street Launch, who invests in her business. That's right, and there's an aspect, two aspects that are at least close to my heart. I think number one is really focusing on women and minority entrepreneurs. To me, we do this for two reasons. Number one, um, it's an incredible strategic sector. Just listening to Tanya, I mean, this woman's gonna go, has already, right, done a remarkable job. How do you not invest in some an entrepreneur like her? And yet, um, women across the board receive, you know, less than 10% of all small business lending dollars, right? Even though they are creating businesses at almost twice the rate of their male counterparts. And so there's a real gap there that needs to be bridged. That's one. And two is the opportunity with your savings, not just to invest in women and minorities, but also in your local community. So where we're going with C-Note is actually a hyper-local strategy that you can reinvest in your community. So what if you knew as you slept that your savings dollars didn't go into some vault or some um, asset class that you have no idea idea um, what it's contributing to, but actually went to support brown sugar. So that, those are the kind of things that we're targeting to make sure that, that our dollars are conscious, that this capital is actually driving the communities we care about, um, not just the businesses we're detached from. I think everybody agrees a restaurant business is probably the most difficult to start. <laughs> yeah. Turnover can be relatively high. Yeah. You got to pay your vendors on time and your customers can turn, turn around anytime and go down the street to some <laughs> cool little place exactly, that opened up. Exactly, so you're, why did I get into this yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> the question? So, yeah. That's what I'm getting to. Is it as risky as it sounds, or is it that it's uh, not as risky when you have your commitment, but it takes everything you have? You know, it d really depends on the business model. I mean, there's mm -hmm. a lot of different business models within the restaurant business. Mm -hmm. um, I've always emulated to cook for more people more often, not special occasion restaurants. Mm -hmm. I've seen special occasion restaurants go out of business pretty quickly. They have a lot of, you know, high-end tableware, um, you know, so they have that breakage. It's very, you know, big wine lists that are very expensive to maintain. So I always had this vision of doing a concept that could be replicated. I've always thought Oaken was just had great, great uh, geographic location. Yes. Great weather. Yes. We don't have any fog in the summer like the it's city the best. does. And everything else. Pretty affordable land in general for that location. Used to be. A wonderful, <laughs> yeah, used to be. Yes. And uh, some geographic diversity. You got the Bay, you got the Emberville, you got Berkeley. So I think, uh, is there a lot going on in Oakland now? Is that is that a quiet story that's going to bubble up? Well, I think it's it's already starting to bubble. And I agree. I mean, having lived in Manhattan in the moving there in the 80s and then living there in the 90s too, and just seeing what happened with Manhattan and Brooklyn, when I moved to Oakland, I just saw this incredible potential uh, uh, potential I saw that you know there was great architectural bones there's this great community of creative people of uh, entrepreneurial people business people and I, a lot of other people have discovered it now and as at that time the real estate was more affordable but it's changing quickly because it is the Bay Area mm -hmm. yeah so did you meet Tanya through this uh, Main, Main Street Falls? I did I did so you know when we talked about sharing this story. It's hard to tell the story without the entrepreneurs because they are at the heart of this. And so I actually went to my partners on the West Coast and I said, give me an mm -hmm. amazing entrepreneur who, I mean, and they did. Um, and, and Tanya's got a beautiful story and, and she's not alone. And there are thousands and thousands of entrepreneurs like Tanya who are so hardworking and so smart um, and very strategic business owners, uh, but are still not getting access to capital. And so we think that there's a tremendous opportunity to change that type. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you've been in the restaurant business a long time. You said, yeah. how many years? 20? Almost 30 when I 30 started. 30 years? You yeah. must have started when you were two years old. So, <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and if you were to talk to this, a lot of people go, I want to start a restaurant. Uh, yeah, they <laughs> yeah. do. <laughs> what are the, uh, what are the um, precautions or the qualifications you might suggest to a person, you know, of any background whatsoever? Yeah, at least work in the business before you invest in, you know, any real estate in the business before you decide to go into a partnership, work in it before you invest even in a culinary program. Work in the business mm -hmm. and make sure it's something you want to do. Are you, are you the sole owner of the business? I, I am. I do have some um, investors, but I'm yeah. the owner, yeah. yeah. 
And, and what's your, your thought for the future? Uh, are you going to just keep this going? Do you want to, shall I say, sir, do you want to franchise it? What do you, you think is going to happen in I, the future? I want to do multiple units, um, yeah. and I have already have a, a, location, a couple location opportunities that I'm trying to fund. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, there'll be brown sugar kitchens everywhere. Yeah, yeah that's a good name. <laughs> There's some, uh, you know, maybe even international opportunities. My cookbook just got translated to Japanese, so there's an interest over there. Yeah. Um, a Dutch film crew came a couple weeks ago, so well, you never know. I'm glad we got you on before you became too famous. <laughs> that's you know, right. I, I yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Well, what's what's coming up for you next, then, uh, Catherine? Are you uh, you've got this launched, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we're working with four CDFIs, CDFIs. right now, um, yeah. and we keep expanding them. And so, really, we are open arms. Uh, it takes two kind of sides to make this work. It takes mm -hmm. um, us obviously being flexible and wanting to work for the benefit of the CDFI, but it also takes an innovative CDFI with a great track record, right? And as you know, we've shared, we take due diligence incredibly seriously when we work and vet CDFIs. Mm -hmm. And so, the hope really is to keep expanding these partnerships across the country, both to expand the opportunity for access to capital to entrepreneurs and also just to provide that type of retail efficient capital for CDFIs. Within your social, your professional circle, do you have people like you who are struggling and going through the... Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Do you think um, there's any big opportunity sitting there that could really open up for uh, people in Oakland or any of the areas around here that is being overlooked by traditional banks? Well, um, you know, there's a lot of people and as Catherine said, like, you know, women and minorities who are ambitious, as ambitious, and they want to make things happen. They want to build brands. And I think, you know, if given an opportunity or platform from which to launch, um, there's a lot going on in Oakland that could be, you know, become national for sure. Well, let's let our audience know how to contact both of you. I'll start with you at, uh, give us your, uh, what you prefer, your website, your email, whatever it is you want. Brownsugarkitchen.com. I'm TH, my initials, <laughs> at brownsugarkitchen.com. That's great. Best place to find me. Yeah. Best place. And you work there, right? Every I day. work there. Every day. I'm, <laughs> I'm in and out there every day, unless I'm doing something else, you know, a, an event yeah. or a radio or TV spot. <laughs> uh, I, I called your uh, business today at 10 o'clock and you answered the phone. So that was great. <laughs> And Catherine, what's your follow-up uh, information? Yeah, so you can get in touch with us at uh, CNote. It's mycnote.com. And you can always email me at cat at cnotegroup.com. We love hearing from folks, and we love connecting entrepreneurs to CDFI. So one of the byproducts of this initiative has actually been not just capital for great savers and capital for entrepreneurs, but actually exposing CDFIs to entrepreneurs who thought they had no way of getting capital. So we're hoping that these are some of the fun things that will come out of this. I want to wish you every success. Tanya, you. really wonderful to have you on Thank here. Thank you. You it's are a such a, a role model. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to drive to Oakland and come to your place. Please. <laughs> I will do that. Next I love segment that. at Brown Sugar Kitchen. That's yeah, right. Next segment at Brown Sugar <laughs> Kitchen. Thanks so Sounds much. Good. Really enjoyed it. I wish you both every success going forward. Thanks for having us. This is Jim Connor. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Game Changers Silicon Valley. Each week, we'll address an area of innovation that may emerge as a game changer of tomorrow. You can follow us on our website, GameChangers.tv, Facebook, or Twitter. We look forward to your continued interest in upcoming shows.